Welcome to the Garage Series, coming to you live from Houston, Texas, TechEd North America. My name is Jeremy Chapman. And I'm Julia White. So we've been in market for a while now, Julia, with Office 365. We thought we would take a step back and really look at what's new and what's Office 365 all up. Anyone who's looked at Office 365 even just a year ago, it's worth taking a look now because so much has changed. We want to make sure that we, do, we support all the devices that people use as well. A lot of great announcements right. in the past couple of months Absolutely. around that too. But before we get started, Let's have a look at today's trivia question. How many new features have been added to Office 365 since June 2013? Is it A, B, or C? So stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. So Julia, just to ground everyone who's watching, what are the capabilities of Office 365? Let's, let's take a right. look. Let's just do a baseline. So why don't you start over there? So email, this is something that people, a lot of people start with, something a lot of people know from an Exchange Online perspective. You get enterprise grade email, all the service level that you'll ever need in terms of right. that, and scale also. And of course, with that, calendaring, right? The ability to have your personal calendar, shared calendars, team calendars, rich capability for that. And since we're talking cloud, I think one of the more exciting features around Office 365 and capability sets, file sync and share. Yep. So we have the ability to do things like not only store files, but real time co authoring, document management and centralized storage and, and really the controls around access to those files. Right, and that's the key to getting everything across all your devices, right? Yep. So conferencing, so real-time conferencing, be able to one-to-one, one-to-many uh, conversations. So it's like we're here together, even though we could be across the globe. And one of the great things in terms of the cloud that we offer and a lot of people are using both in their personal lives and in business now is the ability to do so social right from within things like Yammer and Office 365. So you do have at your fingertips effectively all of the knowledge of the network of those you work with, people you know and sometimes people you don't know in your organization who can contribute to you getting work done. Absolutely. And then of course, all of the IT controls, right? There's an IT Pro show, IT Pro conference. Everything you need to manage it, have the policies, the controls, provisioning, all of that part of the service as well. And a lot of announcements have been made recently, the Office apps, and it's right. something that we want to have great experiences across the full versions of Office to be able to tie those with everything that you work on, plus all of the cross-device and browser support in addition to those rich clients that you're used to. Right. But one of the things that Office 365 really provides as a, as a differentiator and something that's really cool to enable as an IT pro mm -hmm. is the sense that all of this stuff, when you sign up for an Office 365 tenant, whether it's a trial or a production tenant, is just integrated. It all just works right out of the box. Right. I mean, I, used, I say we used to kind of sell you the different parts of the car, right? The wheel, the chassis, the hood. Now, Office 365, we just sell you the car, hand you the keys, and you got everything you need. From a device's perspective, all the things that will work across all the devices that you have, whether it's a laptop, and that could be a Windows or Mac-based laptop, mm -hmm. or, or PC for that matter, tablets, your phone, you can move across all these different devices. The nice thing is at Office 365, because we're storing things centrally. It knows what you've been working on. It can link you to your files across any of these things. It can, you can pick up your work from where you left off. Right. And then, of course, all those IT controls to manage it, right? To make sure you have all the right policy settings, user access rights, and the security and compliance things. E-discovery, rights, rights management, encryption, get all part of the, the whole the solution. Plus all the scripting support that you have. You want to automate huge tasks. You've got 100,000 people right. using the service. PowerShell lets you do all of those things that need bulk automation, really for all of the different controls that you have within Office 365 as an administrator. Right. But we, instead of just talking about all this stuff and what you get, let's show a demo. We let's want to do, do a it. lightning tour of about 10 minutes let's to show all the great light up experiences. So let's do it. All right. Can we clear all the new stuff in Office 365 in 10 minutes? I think we can. All right. Yes, if anybody let's, can do it, you yeah. can. <laughs> anyway, that's right. All right, let's start in email, right? We all know and love email. And um, one of my very favorite new capabilities that's coming to the service is the ability to basically get out of this attachments thing. We're flipping attachments around in email. Let's end that. But it has to be easier than sending an attachment if we're ever going to get users to do it. So let me show you how easy it is now. Let me create a new email. I'm going to insert an attachment. Same thing I've done as a user for many, many years. 
I'm going to attach that document. But now, instead of just attaching it, it actually gives me a choice. I can actually upload that to OneDrive for Business and share it as a link, or I can send attachment. Of course, I'll make the right choice and say, let's go ahead and upload that. And what it does, it actually puts that right there. It looks like it's an attachment. I'm very familiar with that, but it's actually loaded it to OneDrive for Business. And anyone I put in the two line has access to it. So the permissioning is handled as well, right? So now it is literally easier to do this than to just send an attachment. But as a user, I've got all the benefit of my content going to the cloud, one source of truth. We're all collaborating on one document. So, so excited right, about this capability. Something people have been asking for for a long time. Absolutely. The, the getting out of the attachments world is a good one. So, right. save my content to OneDrive. This is OneDrive, right? I have my personal storage, one terabyte of storage per user, amazing value. Super easy to work with. I can just drag and drop my document right into OneDrive for Business. Super easy. I also can sync so that I have right here, I can go ahead and have a local copy of everything as well. So here in my File Explorer, you see there's all that same content. So if I'm offline ever, doesn't matter. I can keep working. And when I get back online, it syncs it back up. So I always have that one source of truth, but I can stay productive on anything I'm doing. Now OneDrive for Business is also where I share and collaborate. So let's say I want to share this proposal with some folks. I've already shared it with some people, but I can add more people as well, and really simply, and I can just add some folks. And because it's IT controlled, I have Active Directory connected, there's my corporate address list rendering right there, but I can send it to anyone as well. So Joe, who's just some person outside my company, and with a single click, I've now shared it to someone inside my company and someone outside my company. So we now can collaborate on that document. And let's talk about collaboration. Let me go ahead and just open that document because I actually want to work on it. And it opens it, and I have the choice if, if I want to edit it in my desktop version of Word or my online. I'm going to go ahead and choose the browser experience. And as that loads. Now, uh, you can see right when I go in that Garth is also editing this document with me. So real-time co-auth, right? Built into all of our Office experiences. But I'm going to show it to you here in the online experience because it's really cool. So right there, there you see Garth editing. I can see pixel by pixel what Garth's doing, which is super cool. But let's say I want to uh, drop in a table here. Let me show you while Garth's making his edits, I want to make mine. This feature up here to tell me just released to Office Online, I literally can just ask it a question, and it's going to tell me what to do. So let's say I want to say insert a table, because I don't remember where in the ribbon tables are. I don't have to care anymore. I go to insert table. It actually takes me to the actual command. It doesn't take me to help or how to. I drop in. I put the table in that simply. So I just literally ask it a question. I can ask it anything in the ribbon. It helps and it's me natural here. language, so you can put grid instead of table. It will recognize that Absolutely. and give you the I same control. Absolutely. I can say paste or build, whatever. It right. actually understands all those different terms. So so easy from a user perspective. All right, so Garth's busy here making all the edits to the table. But I'm done with my edits. And I want to go back. And I'd like to take this document and share it out with my organization, get some feedback, collaborate it with a, a broader group of people. So right here from my OneDrive for business account, I can just go post. And I do that. And it'll post it right out to Yammer. And I can mention some other people and hashtag. Just post that right there. Because all of this is just part of Office 365. It all works together. So now let me go over to my Yammer account. And there, indeed, is my post. I can like it here. I can reply if I want. And this is all the things you'd expect in a great enterprise social experience, but also, again, IT managed. So if I go typing in someone I want to at mention, corporate address list renders, because it's enabled with Active Directory. Super easy from that perspective. Now this is you know, the idea of sharing things openly so everyone can find them. That's the magic of Enterprise Social, is that I can go find relevant information because it's opened. I like, think right. about the information in my inbox. It's probably really useful to you or other people on my team, but they can't find it because it's in my inbox. And also groups. So I have these groups of different things that I'm interested in. So if there is a group of us who want to get together about a certain business topic, really easy. I set it up as a user. I give permissions to whoever wants to join. But then other people can join as well if they find it. And that group concept is something we're going to take and move across all of Office 365 so that we have that lightweight ability to bring people together. And think about today, we have distribution lists, and we have public folders, and team sites, and link buddy lists. I right. always have one simple model that's going to be across everywhere I go in Office 365. Right. All right, now let's talk about the client. So this is Office 365. This is Excel, my desktop app, but it's part of Office 365. I signed into it. So here, uh, I'm signed in, and when I sign in, some very cool things happen. First, I get my recent files right here. Even if this is the very first time I signed into this machine or used this laptop, doesn't matter. It remembers me. It remembers my recent files. It also does things like my favorite templates. And even this graphic here is like the one that I chose. So no matter where I'm signed into Office, I get that, that experience that I know and love. And if I open my Excel file as well, of course, it looks great because it's Office. 
And another great thing is if I go to save as, something that we've been doing for years and years and years, instead of defaulting me to my C drive, it defaults me to my, the cloud, to OneDrive for Business. So it's right. without you just having to learn anything new, they're going to go and get off of their C drive and into their OneDrive. And when they have that, they can now do co-auth and collaboration with their coworkers, and they get their content across all their devices. If your content's sitting on this C drive, I'm only productive on this machine. And I know that people have a lot more than that to do. Right. So, so speaking of that, let's talk about devices. Yes, because we've got a lot of great announcements lately in terms right. of iPad support. I bet a lot of people here even are using Office for iPad. I hope so. It's a great new app. So hopefully you know we launched Office for iPad. And let me just show you a quick tour of what that looks like. So I'll go into Word here. And obviously, my document looks awesome. Nothing of those other you know, knockoffs that kind of ruin your content. Everything looks beautiful. Rich content here. Um, all the capabilities I know and love, that familiar ribbon experience, everything there. And, um, and really, we thought about making this as comfortable as possible for all of our 1 billion Office users so they can just drop into these apps and get started right away. But it's also great with touch. I can interact with it. I can you know, drag here. I get all the common things like cut, copy, paste. And I can do even some more sophisticated things, like I can even change the themes of my whole document. So really powerful apps on the iPad. But again, great with touch. And if I go down, let me show you one of my favorite features. So I touch on this picture, for instance. So maybe I want to resize it. I can do that nice big touch handles, resize that down. And if I want to move it around, look how that text just flows right around it. So I can do even more sophisticated layout things in this, in this app, all touch, really, really simple. Now, actually, I'll show you one of my other favorites, too, is PowerPoint. And again, my content looks beautiful. But I think we think because people will do a lot of presentations using PowerPoint on the iPad. So let me go into presentation mode and show you everything, all my animations, my transitions. Everything looks really beautiful. Right. And some cool new features that we've made um, just for this app, because we kind of know the device and how they're using it. If I touch and hold, you'll see I get a laser pointer. So I can highlight what I'm talking about. Yep. Or I can even do some anim markup, annotation. Maybe I want to circle this or have people focus here. Again, a great new tools in a touch way that I can enhance my presentation and make it more impactful. So very cool stuff we're doing on the iPad. Right, all right, now let's talk about the future and what's coming. So we've been busy working hard on what this thing called the Office Graph. And it's basically a machine learning kind of intelligence layer that's invisible, but running underneath everything we're doing. And I like to say it's kind of like Cortana's brain. The same right. thing that lets Cortana learn about you and kind of personalize to you, it's the same fundamental model of what's feeding the Office Graph. And what the Office Graph does, it looks at all the content I'm working on, the emails I'm sending, the people I'm collaborating with, what the people I'm working with are also doing, and it's getting smarter and smarter and learning that. So now, instead of just being dumped with all kinds of information, it's actually creating a personalized relevance-based model that the information has surfaced to me. So one of the very first apps we've built on top of the Office Graph is this new codenamed Oslo app. Now I open up Oslo, and what this is is a personalized view that's actually showing content based on what's most relevant to me right now. So based on what I've been working on, what my coworkers have been doing, it's updating this view and saying, hey, here's the content that's most relevant. Here's the things that are most useful for you right now, real time, always learning, always getting smarter. And it's actually helping me know why. What's, why is this useful to me? So in this marketing campaign here, it's saying it was modified by me, it's trending around me. That means the people I'm working with are also interacting with this document. Document. So it's giving me that view. Mm -hmm. And then I've liked it and it's been viewed by me. So I have visibility into why it's surfacing this information to me. And then we, have, we can do all kinds of different things and search for different things using Oslo. And we have these default things that we've set up, like presented to me, modified by me, shared with me. So let me go to presented to me. Now this is a really sophisticated search, right? But the Office Graph knows the meetings I'm in, the attendees of those meetings, and what content has been shared as part of that meeting. And so as a single click, I now get that information surfaced to me. Again, who knows where this content's sitting? It's all over my company, different shares, different data. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can find that and surface it to me in a single click. But one of the things I love, too, it's more than just content. It's also about people. And so let me go search on Bill, for example, someone I work with all the time. I can see Bill. And when I search on a person in Oslo, it gives me two views of him. First, it shows me his hierarchy, coming from Active Directory, right? his right. manager, peers, directs. But now I get another view of Bill and how he's spending his time, which is increasingly nothing to do with your, corp your hierarchy. right? It's about who you're working with across the company. Right. So I see who he's working with and who Bill and I are both working with. So I can make those connections. And again, another opportunity to find information and work like a network. Um, but also, I see information that's trending around Bill here. 
But it's important to note, I'm only seeing the information that's also shared with me. So right. it, of course it respects privacy and all the permissioning models. So I see what's relevant to Bill also um, shared with me. So let me show you one super cool thing, which is if I click on this video, we have a new Office 365 video portal coming later this year. Um, basically, it has a, um, Azure Media Services running underneath it to do all the video encoding and the rendering to make sure I can show that video on any device. And I can set up different channels, my marketing videos, my user, my user help and how-to videos, all in an enterprise sourced way. So great new capability coming to the service later this year. Very cool tour. tour. Thank sure. you, Julia, for showing that. But before we wrap up today's show, let's have a look at our trivia question. How many new features have been added to Office 365 since June 2013? Is it A, B, or C? Okay, so, does anybody know the answer to the question? <laughs> C, all, all right. right. The answer to the question was indeed C. More than a hundred new features. You know, we've enumerated about a hundred through the blog, but there's a right. bunch of stuff like through even policy settings, capabilities more in the, the deep IT pro level that we've been doing over the last year. Stuff that you would have had to wait a couple of years for in the right. past which is really exciting, really cool in terms of this always on yeah. agile engineering model. And that's the thing, we now have this kind of cloud first engineering model that is able to have these kind of ongoing releases every week to push something new to the service so you don't have to wait for it. So we have these kind of sprints from an engineering perspective. So the innovation you've seen come to Office 365 in the past year, is only increasing as we have this new cloud first model. Of course, all of this information can be found at the Office blog at blogs.office.com. We try to give as much great content on the Garage series at Microsoft.com slash garage. And you can follow us on Twitter at Office Garage. So thank you all for watching and goodbye for now.